Uh, this is a weird form. It emerged in, in somehow, and uh, you know, it's the, the 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 moment it started. It starts with these paintings, and you know, I started painting when I finished my PhD degree, and then uh, in uh, in an interesting way, I just kept kept doing it. But I, I was also I've been also uh, photographing these uh, these images. Some of them are close-ups, some of them are, you know, capturing the whole picture and so on. And then I got interested in just running, training a machine learning model using these images. And these are some outcomes from that. Uh, so, and it's interesting because, you know, I'm, I'm, I think painting these things by following some sort of procedure using painting knives. And I was curious if those patterns would emerge and somehow they did, right? So these images are not exactly that my paintings, but they're reminiscent of the patterns that I'm using. Uh, and then looking into them, I think the, the, the generated image from the software is a little like ephemeral. It's pretty low contrast, you cannot see much. So the right. first thing I did was enhance it in Photoshop a little bit, but at the same time you see these, uh, you know, weird dots. And I was pretty cu curious about like where they really came from. And then in one of the paintings, I remember that I had these like little, you know, splashes. So essentially just having, I think eight to 10 images from one, uh, you know, painting among 800 paintings affected and cre started creating these, you know, little dots, which is, a, which is interesting about, you know, data sets. So if you're running a machine learning uh, tool, uh, you have to find a way to, you know, be, be very cautious and let's say aware about what you're including in the data set. Okay. So we call this uh, cloud. Can, can I interrupt real quick? Yeah, yeah, please. Anytime. Yes. All right. Uh, I'm also, I'm always curious about re sort of recursive, recursive uh, uh, results. So I would be curious to see what the results of, putting the uh, machine learning paintings back into the algorithm would then generate if they're sort of self-referential you know what do you get from that and like are we distilling down to after 30 cycles to you know like one one painting because everything's sort of you know uh, sort of cold out but I just am curious about I'm yeah, curious about that that's a great point so what you're saying is okay this was your data set right you started with this, I started with this and I generated this. Mm -hmm. You're saying, what if we use this as the data set now right. and keep going and see, right. the find the golden, you know, golden yeah, the set golden, of- like, <laughs> Yeah, like does it, do they, are they, do they continually get more homogenous and less distinct mm -hmm. or, or what, what's the result? You know, does, is there a distillation that the algorithm has that's subtle that will only emerge over, you know, 30, cycles or something I don't, I don't know but you know it's interesting i, I think that's a great idea uh, maybe, maybe, maybe noise noise is the ultimate result of uh, <laughs> right, yeah. that loop it's interesting yeah exactly and probably it will depend on uh because you are going from one more vivid and let's say i would say visually pretty wide spectrum of images it's kind of distilling a little bit right so it's going uh really narrow and from this onwards, I think if you try this, I think it's going to get narrower. But mm -hmm. as I, as Ahmed says, maybe because depending on the resolution, it may become noise, or it may become just like really clear patterns, right? So mm -hmm. the really sharp edges and so on and so forth. I should also maybe just kind of like show these a couple of like live guys. So this is pretty much, uh, mm -hmm. this is not one of the early ones. I also have this other camera here, so I'm just going to show it there. Uh, and the the infamous pa painting that caused those weird, uh, <laughs> you know, the eye eye kind of dot was pretty much this guy, just just having those uh, splashes and so on. Okay, so from there on, the the reason. So there are two reasons. One is the the cloud tectonics. Okay, where is this is this name coming from? I I don't like naming these things, you know, because people talk about like machine consciousness and intelligence and so on and so forth. So, I mean, the names are flying in the air. So I'm not too happy with cloud tectonics. But let me explain my reason. 
so the first thing I tried was, you know, I went to, I took these uh, generated images and I, I'm really interested in this kind of like creating these meshes. You know, I've been playing with them for more over than more than two or three years now. And I took every image and I wanted every image to have their, its representational cloud, right? So I make some bitmap processing extruded in space and create this like mesh as a wrapper around the points. And obviously every paint generates a different cloud, right? Because the whatever X, Y pixel five to five is in a different spot in space when you do this uh, kind of uh, bitmap processing. So first came the cloud, but then just doing like four or five images, I realized that they were, they're quite different, but because you're losing the color, they are not as distinct, right? So then I said, okay, I'm gonna preserve the cloud. Uh, but then again, something else if it happened, like I said, okay, I'm gonna also use these plates, right? So which are very architectural, right? So these kind of like floor, almost floor plates or balconies started mm -hmm. emerging. And then, uh, and then they, they, they wow, I said, okay, this proves that I was really an architect, right? Or I am still an architect, but you know, just going to that past. And the naming that's, that's how interestingly enough that's how i introduced myself to you by asking why why you would introduce those those slab typology to this there you go and here yeah. we are then you'll write so yeah. that was that was great and i think i think you were were you the one who mentioned to maybe change the f number of floor plates or mm. no a couple of people no. asked about that so mm. it's interesting that and i i know that we happen to meet after the these you know explorations right so uh, it's it's great that the, the connection was half architectural and maybe half visual, like painting mm -hmm. stuff, right? I remember mm -hmm. you writing about yep. that. So I switched the Instagram account and started aggressively posting these. And I think it was this image. Yeah, here I said, okay, you know, this is, who else is a flamingo? Right, so I suddenly started like seeing a flamingo here, and it already had the leg, almost the legs too, right? Mm -hmm. In a weird way, the beak and the head and the leg and the small wings and the butt. So that was pretty funny. But again, if you look at the history of this thing, let me zoom a little bit. So in 2D, you know, the, the side view, this is again, very architectural view. So this is the facade, right? Mm -hmm. This is like the urban scale rendered from, <laughs> from yeah. below. And then like the close-ups, and it's all generated from this very simple, uh, you know, blended image, right? So this is generated by uh, the machine learning uh, algorithm. And then uh, I posted, yeah, and then this was the breaking point. So this is interesting. We will see Ahmed here. I posted this and I put all these greenish icons, right? Green and blue, it's because I didn't know what to, what to call it. And then, uh, John, who is also a former friend, he said Goblin Town Generator, <laughs> right? And then he tagged Ahmed. And Ahmed said, Oh, you know, we, we see goblin tectonics here. So he's like, the, is, This is a great sample for that. And then suddenly I was like, oh, Yes, this is the right word, right? Tectonics. What do you think, Daniel? That, that does it fit for you? Does it work for you? Sure. I mean, personally, I'm far more excited by cloud than I am tectonics. But um, I, yeah, I, th I think it, I think it, it makes sense. I think the introduction of strata is kind of an interesting addition. I don't know if it's manifest in the way that I necessarily would, would see it. I think it, it, I, I'd like to see it a little bit more complementary to what's going on there or maybe mm. reductive instead of additive. But um, I do think that there's something really exciting about uh, strata and this idea of potentially geological or time uh you know somehow represented in these layers yeah that's a that's a great point and i think i ended up in an interesting way about these images what i thought is uh it made me re-realize that architecture has so many layers into it in mm -hmm. terms of parts components and expression right so i think product design is I don't want to call it simpler, but it's easier to deal with. In architecture, sometimes you put stuff together which is too flat and too sophisticated or all flat, but they need to be differentiated in a way, right? So this one for me was doing it, right? So you have this mad mesh going, you know, 
uh, at the background, but then on the side view, suddenly you start seeing the strata, as you said, the lines, the floor plates, whatever they are, the balconies, and it's kind of like taming the thing down. Whereas again, like you start seeing these, the other liquid metal thing, right? Which mm -hmm. is adding this other layer of kind of madness to that. And everything is again emerging from one single image. Mm -hmm. What I want to point out in this image again, we, before we move to the, the naming session quickly is, uh, it's pretty interesting in the way that you have this blur on the right side and, you know, a sharper features on the left side and the half eye on the here. So I talked about the eye a little bit, but what's happening here is that most of the photographs, they have um, depth of field, right? So I use the lens and I took them in an angle. So you would see a focal point and then you would have a lot of like a, a blur around the mm -hmm. picture. And then again, that quality is somehow captured by the style Gantt that I was using. So I find that pretty interesting too. Uh, awesome. So what I did is I have a bunch of videos as you have seen here, you know, formerly. Uh, I took this guy because this appears to be the, <clears throat> this appears to be one, the, the one which has all the uh, perspective view, right? Mm -hmm. Plus the, uh, plus the uh you know side view and the and the painting and the top view and so on and so forth so probably this is going to be a little uh it's it's better to use this one that i thought and we have the numbers right so i i generated thousand images so far and this is pretty much capturing 250 to uh 500 499 to be exact and all the images are actually these are smaller now but i rendered everything in 4k so it's a really mm -hmm huge set of you know png files that are waiting to be used in one way or another so this this mm -hmm. video is one of them and plus i also have to admit uh i have to sort of pull the curtain aside i'm a sucker for a gradient like i i am just anything anything that graduates from something to something else is i love it so that's also what attracted me here too is the fact that uh, you know the graduation of color and form and and all of that. So I, I think I love it, man. I'm 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 yeah. lucky to have you. Then you know, like you're coming like full, uh, with full uh, support and admire. Yeah. You know, uh, so you're, I, yeah, I I'm I like a fan, the fact that for sure. ah, 